YouTubers, I'm back and I am back with Going Natural for Dummies. This is going to be a Return of the Fro Super Bowl. I big chopped or BC'd um, December of 2000, no, excuse me. I big chopped in April of 2014. I stopped getting relaxers in December of 2013. Those dates are important and they're important to know or at least pay attention to um, when watching YouTube. Now, going natural is hard. <laughs> Transitioning is harder. And um, YouTube can really be your friend during those times, especially if you are like me and you don't have a lot of people who are going through that too and they can't, they can't really help you. Um, but those dates are really important because people use them interchangeably sometimes and it skews the data. If you say, I've been natural for a year, it could mean both of those things. So for mine, it's only a four month difference. So it's, it's not too much of a length difference. There are some, I'm sure, but not too much. So since I big chopped in December 2013, I've technically already been natural a year. But I don't count from there. I count being natural from when I kept cut my relaxed ends off. But some people don't, and they count being natural from since they stopped getting perms. And some people will transition for a whole year before they cut. So you'll see this girl with this big, beautiful hair, and she's been natural for a year, and you're like, I've been natural for a year, and my hair looks like this. How come? Well, it's because she has a year of growth that she's not really accounting for when she says that. Your body has been growing hair your whole life. Your body has been growing hair since before you were born. Your body's kind of good at it. So don't worry too much about this girl's hair is, is like this and my hair is like this and how come and how come. Don't do that to yourself. Just watch your own hair. Stay in your yard, okay? Stay in your kitchen when watching YouTube. Be aware of the hair types. Uh, I didn't really, I heard about the hair types, but I thought it was kind of fake. I didn't realize how big of a deal it really is. A lot of the popular natural videos are people with looser curls because that's still a little bit more accepted and that's what people I think kind of imagine their hair is going to be like when they think about natural or they go the complete opposite and their hair is going to be like straight Brillo pad and <laughs> and then there's that and most of the time you're wrong and you're somewhere in between you can't watch a girl with 4a or 3b hair when you have hair like mine and expect for the same products or the same results because it's completely different and her hair pattern is completely different um so you might not know what your hair pattern is, but just be aware of that when you're watching um, until you know what your hair pattern is. And once you know, I would really recommend just watching videos that are about your hair pattern because it's like apples and oranges. There's no point in watching, you know, how to make apple pie if you got oranges. You need to watch a good old, old Orange Julius tutorial and see what you might could do. Big chopping and common natural lingo. <laughs> I kept hearing TWA, TWA, TWA. And I'm like, is that like NWA or like, oh no. TWA means teeny weeny afro. I don't know why they got to use acronyms for everything, but they do. So if you hear TWA, that means teeny weeny afro. And that's probably what neighborhood ballpark you're going to be in fresh after your big chop. Accessorize, accessorize, accessorize. The bigger the hoop, the bigger the hair. I like really loud stuff um, because I really wanted to set off my hair and you know I wanted to go all Africa Mambato on y'all. You can't you can't hate on a good standby gold baby mama hoop okay oops well I lost that one. I kind of went a little earthy even though I'm not all about that earth life. I'm not about the earth life. Where do I live? So that like you know kind of cheap jewelry that you would stay away from before that's your friend because it's 60 second stuff you know if it if it breaks if you lose it if it falls off you don't really care but it looks great and it kind of really, I don't know, it brings out something about that look. And it helps you to still feel pretty when you don't have all this hair to play in that you're used to having. You you accessorize and that's your new fun thing. And, it's, and it really does tie it together and make you look, I don't know, I don't know what to explain. Like, is it like an ethnic look or it's pretty. So don't be afraid to go hit up your, your local uh, uh, Charming Charlie if you have them. Um, or, oops, see, Charming Charlie. Or Claire's or, you know, the hair store even. that I've gotten stuff from the hair store too. Just, you know, stuff to make you feel fun and pretty and give you a chance to kind of change up your look even though you can't change up your hair at the moment. Hair accessories as well. I have a whole bunch of pictures. When I got when I cut all my hair off, I just literally stood in the bathroom with like all these different headbands that I bought and tried them each on. I'll put a couple for my little photo shoot.
I like I like kind of the girly, softer look sometimes. The thinner the band, the bigger it makes your hair look, you know. And I still wear this band even with all this stuff up here. Because, oh well, accessorize. And um, I like also to wear things like this, especially in the winter, the wider bands. And I have a video where my hair isn't stretched at all. And I wore this and I think it still looks really good. Um, so, you know, once again, in your, in your Forever 21s or whatever, whatever, they have great headbands. And you should use those in... Or clips. I didn't bring any of my clips, but like, you know, people do the flower thing. I'm not really into the flower clip. I feel like it's kind of overdone. But if you want to do a flower clip, girl, get you a flower clip, girl. It's going to be an emotional experience. I don't care how unattached you think you are to your hair. The bottom line is, is for most black girls, we've had perms from, you know, at least pretty much puberty. <laughs> some before, some a little bit after. I got my first perm when I was 11. So, and I and I cut all my hair off when I was 21. For 10 years, all I knew was straightened hair. And then even before I got my perm at 11, my mom pressed my hair pretty much religiously. So yeah, it's going to be an emotional experience. There's, there's just really no way around it. You're going through two big changes at once. You're going to be probably shorter than you've ever been lengthwise in your whole life. And then you're going to have a texture you've never had to deal with at least yourself <laughs> pretty much your whole life at the exact same time. So girls that are in the chair crying when they get their permed hair cut, you know, you're going to go through that. Plus having this alien form on your head that you're not, you know, you're not used to at all. It's going to be hard. It's going to mean something to you, even if you think it won't. I thought it wouldn't. I'm like, I'm ready. And I was just ready to be done transitioning because let me tell you something, transitioning is hard. And the people on YouTube make it look so easy and it's not because... The bottom line is, and I've said this before, you pay good money for your hair to be straight and to be straight against all odds, okay? And so you trying to do a little twist out, a little braid out or whatever is never really going to make that hair look the same as this. It's just not going to happen. Um... And the hair is so fragile at the line of demarcation or whatever where the coily hair meets their straight ends. And so you, you know, to constantly be handling that, even in twisting or finger words or whatever, whatever, bantu knots, whatever they're telling these young kids to do these days, it's, you know, you're causing the breakage and a lot of it ends up breaking off at the new hair anyway. So I thought I could transition. I wanted to transition, excuse me, transition as long as possible because I really couldn't imagine being bald-headed or having no hair, you know, so I really wanted to give my hair a chance to grow out as long as it could before I cut it. Um, but I did, like I said, you saw, I did about four months of that, and I was like, you know what, come what may, because I am so over this stringy perm stuff, hanging off of this strong bamboo-looking stuff, and I just, I want one or the other, and at that time, I'd already went too far, in my opinion, to go back to perming it, and probably a lot of damage would have been done by letting it grow that long without perming it. So I was like, you know what? Balls to the wall. Cut it off. I would not recommend doing anything that you're not comfortable with because it is such a journey. And if you're not 100% committed to this, it will show and you will be miserable. So don't cut it not a day before you're ready to cut it. Just be aware when you're going into it if you think you want to transition and not just go straight to the big chop that it is going to be difficult and you're basically trying every day to figure out how to make these two worlds coexist for a little bit and um, they don't really want to. A lot of people believe that people go natural to save money and I don't think I've ever spent more money on my hair since going natural. I mean, I spend so much money on natural hair, it is ridiculous. You use a lot more product than you do with permed hair, um, and your hair goes through it. If, if it likes it, it goes through it. If it doesn't, then you end up with a hair graveyard like what I have. My hair graveyard is small, but take into account the fact that I've only been natural a year and I'm on a struggling college budget. So I didn't exactly have a whole lot to uh, get as crazy as I wanted to with the products, but even with all that, this is how much I have. Um, as far as products, I don't do anything for my hair and I just sit there collecting dust. Here we go. These are all the products that just sit in my closet in the hair graveyard doing nothing for me but making my hair collection look extensive. Um, I spent a whole bunch of money on these different things that promise to detangle and nourish and strengthen and 
hydrate and I don't even know what that one's supposed to do, but people swear by it in the natural 4C community at least. And none of them, I haven't found that they do anything for my hair. And then I did all of that spending and stuff just to basically end up with this is these things that I use probably on a daily basis. Just this. This is all I pretty much ever use. So just be aware. There's nothing you can really do about it. You don't know until you try it. If you're lucky to have a friend that'll let you use something or some samples, do samples if you can find them. Um, people say that there's stores and stuff like Ulta and stuff that have samples where you don't have to commit so much money to trying something that may or may not work. And if you love it, go back and buy it. But if you don't, you only spent a couple dollars instead of 20 on something that doesn't do anything for you. You would really need to be confident to go into this journey because... You'd be surprised about the opinions that there are. What you might not be surprised about is everybody has one. Probably at least once a day. Um, I have a job where I see a lot of people. And so I literally had one person that says, so what do you do to make it like that? I was like, wake up. I think I had like a twist out or something or maybe, I don't know. And it was a couple of days old and so my hair was looking real crazy. And, um, you know, I'll stop a band on it or whatever. Another thing, beanies will become your best friend. And I have a nice collection of beanies, I like to think. But, you know, you have the ones with the spikes and all this stuff. When your hair refuses to cooperate, which will happen. And I don't think it's ever really happened to me with permed hair. Your hair sometimes will just be like, no, screw you. Stop touching me. I'm not doing this today. I just won't do it. I won't perform. Beanie. I'll slap one of these on in a minute. Put on some big earrings and go boho chic. Don't play with me. But everybody will have opinions um, most of them are good, but there will be bad ones, and, uh, you'd be surprised where they come from. Uh, my husband is white, so I was very nervous about what it was going to be like when he came home, and I had cut off all my hair, and I actually have it in one of the videos. Maybe I'll insert a clip somewhere. So, overall, this is going to be a win. Yes. I can do this now. <laughs> you always could do that. No, I couldn't. You always... Those are my weeds! <laughs> my I'm done. He loves it. Like, loves it, loves it, loves it. Always in it. Wants to touch it. Wants to know what I'm doing with it. Why do I have a plastic bag on my head? Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> it's, it's never a dull moment in our house. One person that kind of is not a thousand percent a fan is my mother. Hi, mom. She sometimes has a hard time with it. And you have to understand that generation worked hard to smooth our hair and smooth our edges and smooth their edges. And, you know, they're the creator of the conch, you know. So to see their kids going back to the hair that they were taught their whole lives that they needed to hide, it's difficult for them. You know, they my mom will always be like, you're not going to do anything to it. Did you do something to it? What you going to do to it? I'm not going to do anything to it. You know, um, besides, you know, things that are for its health and stuff, but to sit there and like manipulate it to an extreme so that it will look different than what God wanted it to look like. I'm not going to do that. You'd be surprised. I think I've gotten more negative reactions from black people than white people. So that's something that, you know, might shock you. But nonetheless, someone will always have something to say and they will always feel like you need to hear it. If you have any questions, leave them down below. I will answer them to the best of my dummy ability. And until next time, see ya. Bye. Bonus clip. Okay, I remember one more thing I wanted to tell you, which is the shrinkage game is real. You never want to be the girl that's like, I'm not bald headed. My hair's probably longer than yours. That's actually probably true. <laughs> like Blue Ivy, her hair probably like got some serious hang time. So you see like how my hair looks. Like I said, this is completely natural. Just a little bit of water and olive oil. But like if you get like, you see? how long it actually is when you like stretch it as much as you can with in this state because if you do like a twist out or a braid out you know it'll help stretch it a little bit longer so these are the ones that kind of still are a little stretched even though I washed it so you take this and you see like it goes to about there